Okay, Random Bitter, uh, China's Bitter Revolution, uh, page 49, Shanghai, China's Modern Challenge. This is from the chapter two, The Tale of Two Cities, about Shanghai and Beijing. So let's go to Shanghai, China's Modern Challenge. Beijing's rival Shanghai was a very different sort of place. An outward-looking colonial city it thinks now, as it did in the early 20th century, not of the parochial task of upstaging its rival cities in China, but rather of ranking itself with New York, Paris, or Tokyo as one of the great cities of the world. Some of the most central parts of Shanghai's architecture have survived much better than the monuments of the capital. The view that a visitor would see today on Shanghai's famous waterfront, the Bund, is very similar to the Vista in 1920, consisting of pompous buildings that housed landmarks such as the Hong Kong and Shanghai Bank. The major shopping thoroughfare that leads off the Bund, Nanjing Road, has rather different businesses lining it today. Ajinomoto Noodles, the Sofitel Hotel, and McDonald's again. But its mix of bright lights, advertising, and unashamed consumerism would not surprise anyone knew the street in the 1920s. If you were to cross from the Boon to the other side of the creek, the Pudong area, which was mostly muddy flats contained in warehouses before 1990, you would find it now a science fiction metropolis of skyscrapers, complete with a 21st century magnetic levitation train to the new airport. Blah. Oh, wait, there's a great sentence here. Shanghai was a legendary city for all classes and nations. The Briton Maurice Tinkler was not alone in his awe. Making Whoopi was the crude but not inaccurate way in which a guidebook of the 1930s summed up the nightlife of Shanghai for rich foreign visitors. A character in a short story by the writer Ding Ling, a peasant seeking his fortune, says, Shanghai is a big place. It's not like where we come from. Lots of people with plenty of money. It'll be easy making a living there. For people around the globe, from world travelers to the poorest Chinese, Shanghai had a reputation for trashy verve of befitting a polyglot bastard child of imperialism. Um, can we just nominate that for the sentence of the decade? For people around the globe, from world travelers to the poorest Chinese, Shanghai had a reputation for trashy verve befitting a polyglot bastard child of imperialism. Wow, page 50, Bitter Revolution. I don't know, can Jeffrey Wasserstrom top that sentence? I mean, reputation for trashy verve? That's just great right there. But then he just goes on. Well, 